Hi, my name is Markus Kaspermeyer. Uh, I'm a backend developer at Hello Again, and today I will talk about how we handle integrations of hundreds of different systems into our loyalty solution. As a start, I will quickly explain what we actually do at Hello Again. In general, we want to make our clients' customers more valuable. Therefore, we provide our loyalty solution. In most cases, it's an app where you can collect points, you can redeem rewards and stuff like that. What separates us from other companies is that there is no one big Hello Again app. We provide a customized solution for each client. Our customers differ actually a lot in terms of their industry. Some examples are retail stores, we have online shops, we have customers in the service industry like hairdressers, and we also have economic regions like cities. In addition to that, our customers also um, vary a lot in terms of size. We have customers from a few thousand users up to a few million users. So yeah, really a good mix, mixture in there. We offer a lot of features in our product. For the user side, we provide our app and our web app. And for the client side, we provide our Hello Again dashboard, which is the control center of our loyalty solution. Some of the features are user management, loyalty mechanics, collecting points and redeeming rewards. We offer tools for user feedback, sharing features, messaging, analytics, and we also integrate third-party systems into our system. Speaking of integrations, the main question here is, how can our customer get the most value out of our product? It's pretty simple. We integrate their ecosystem into their loyalty solution. With customers uh, of different size and uh, different industry, we got a lot of different uh, tools we need to integrate. We have cash registers, the point of sale, where you can, for example, can collect points or get a digital receipt. We also have booking tools, so you can book an appointment directly in the app. Or we have online shops, CRM systems, and even more. Yeah, if we want to integrate all of those systems, we'll of course face some challenges. First, what is our goal here? We do not want to have like thousands of different custom implementations for each client. They take a lot of time and they're really hard to maintain. So our main goal is here to create really simple and generic integrations and processes so we can have a really quick uh, setup process for new clients. In general, we have three types of customers. The first type of customer has unrestricted, uh, unrestri <laughs> sorry, unrestricted possibilities um, for customization. So they can implement custom features. They provide APIs and services that we can use and so on. The second type, um, has limited possibilities. So most, in most cases, there is no possibility for custom code, but they can provide some services that we can use. And the last one, the hardest case are the customers which have no possibilities at all. So no custom code, no services, nothing. Yeah. In addition to the client uh, restrictions, we also face some other issues. So in total, we have like really hundreds of different of systems we need to integrate, sometimes even in-house solutions. We have a different combination, and also different usage, uh, usages of the subsystem, and also sometimes a lack of technical know-how there. Yeah, facing all those challenges in order to achieve our goals, we actually use different building blocks. We will discuss them later, but to give you a rough overview, we provide an external API for most of our features. We also provide plugins for selected online shops. We use Google Cloud products and services like um, Cloud Functions and Workflows, stuff like that. We also use Open Integration Hub, which is a, a open source integration platform. In addition to that, um, we provide some configurable backend services like webhooks and uh, custom coupon backends. And last but not least, we offer our POS solution, 
which is a way to integrate the cache register system without touching its software. So it's really interesting, but more to that later. Yeah, in order to understand how we can actually use those tools, I'll roughly explain our system architecture. So in the core, we have our server where we run multiple instances of our backend. Connected to our backend, we have our database and also some communication gateways for push, not push notifications, for emails and SMS and so on. Our apps, uh, the web apps and also our dashboard communicates directly with the server. Yeah, so the question is, how can we integrate this third party system into our system here? For customers of type one, those who have like really unlimited uh, possibilities, we provide a few different options that they can use. As I said before, we provide external APIs for most of our features, which is user data, uploading receipts or creating um, rewards and stuff like that. In cooperation with uh, some external partners, we also provide plugins for selected online shops. Those plugins are really easy to install and they handle most of the functionality that we actually need here. So they will synchronize user data, they upload the purchases to our server. So it's a really easy process there. In addition to that, uh, we offer, as I said, the configurable backend services, webhooks and, and coupon backends. With those services, we can address external systems simply by configuration. So to give you some examples, we can forward user data to external CRM system after the sign up, or we can validate the code which is scanned in, a, in the app uh, using a third party system, something like that. Yeah. The issue is only some of our integrations uh, could be implemented by our customers. So for customers of type two, those who provide services that we can use, we will handle the integration. Our goal for this type of integration is that we want to keep the custom code separated from our backend. Second goal is that we want to keep it easy to implement, easy to set up, and also really important, easy to maintain. The third one is actually the reusability. We want to keep that as high as possible. Yeah, to give you a rough idea what the tasks are that we need to solve here, some examples, we often need to handle data transformation. So we get some purchase data or booking data in an external format, and we need to transfer that into our internal format. Another example is uh, data retrieval. So we get the booking data on an external service or even on an FTP server, or stuff like that. Yeah. To implement those tasks, uh, we actually started to use uh, Open Integration Hub, which is an open source integration platform. We are still using it, but we had some issues with stability and also some failures and stuff like that. So we, for later um, integrations, we switched to using Google Cloud Services, uh, Cloud Functions, Cloud Run, Cloud Workflows, all that together. But basically, um, those two serve the same purpose. Uh, we want to build really simple and reusable components that do only really limited tasks like uploading receipts and uh, downloading a file so that we can reuse them in our workflows. As an example, as I said, the, the process of uploading a receipt is really simple and it's always the same. We get a list of formatted receipts, we want to upload it, upload it to our server using our external API. So it's a really simple process. And therefore we can build a single configurable cloud function, which only does this part. Yep. Um, similar to that, we can actually build those simple configurable cloud functions for most of the, or for the, co for the most common functionality we need in our integrations. And for the custom uh, stuff, which is most likely the data transformations, we can also build a simple cloud function, but this time it will be more client specific. Uh, using this set of components, we then can build our workflows really easily. So those two tools actually allow us to uh, create really high, highly reusable components 
and also that we can keep the custom code as little as possible. Yeah. Um, what can we do for customers of type three? So those who have actually no options. In general, we try to find a solution for each client, but it has to be reasonable. So sometimes we can use some existing functionality like a really simple data export. Um, so we can try to build a workflow that uh, uses this data export and uh, retrieves it from a server, transforms it and upload it to, to our server. So it means that we can really take a minimal feature set and still provide a value to our customer. But speaking of limited possibilities, can we actually integrate the point of sale without even touching its code? Yes, we can. Uh, together with a partner, we um, offer our POS solution. The POS solution is a piece of software which is directly installed on the operating system of the um, POS system. So it's really separated from the, um, the POS um, software, it's separated software. Uh, this POS solution will recognize uh, once a purchase is finished and the receipt should be printed. So it will intercept this printing process, ask for additional user data, like the customer number. So this could be put in or scanned using the app. And after that, it will upload this receipt that should actually be printed to our server together with the user data. Our server then can um, process this receipt using OCR. And in the end, we can award points to the user. So as you can see here, we can even find a solution with a, like really minimal to no options. Yeah, in order to understand how we actually use those tools and integrations, I'll give you two simple examples. The first one is a really common cash box integration for a customer of type one. Um, usually the workflow is like this. Me as a user, I'll go um, to the point of sale. I will show my app, they will scan it. And in the end, I'm as user, I am um, identified. So the usual purchase process um, will go on. And when it's finished, the point of sale will, in addition, send the receipt to our server. So our server can process it and we can award the points. Of course, there's more to a cash register integration than just this. Uh, we have to handle returns and handle rewards and, and so on. But this is really the, the basic workflow. And as you can see, just by providing our external API, there's really little to, to no um, effort on our side. Uh, that we just need to provide some support for the client to actually um, implement the integration. The second example is uh, import of custom booking data. Um, this could be a customer of type two or maybe three. Let's assume that the, the booking data is available on a FTP server. We can try to build a workflow which um, uses cloud functions and actually has to do three steps here. The first one is we need to fetch the booking data. Um, so we need to download it from the FTP server. Therefore, we can really build a simple cloud function that does only the download there. It could be configurable, so we can reuse it for other integrations. The second step is actually transforming the data into our um, internal format. This time, we can also build a cloud function, but it will be client-specific as we have some custom code in there, depending on the format. And the final step is actually uploading uh, the receipts then to our server, which again could be a reusable cloud function. To complete the workflow, we just um, set up a scheduler, which then executes the, the workflow. As you can see in this example, once we have built our main reusable components, we can really quickly set up a new integration. The only thing that is needed here is to implement the custom data transformation, but it's really little effort there. Yeah, starting with the disadvantages, Actually, it takes time to find the fitting tools for that many different integration cases. 
most of the time it's learning by doing. We even had to replace the tool because it couldn't fulfill our ever changing requirements. But by using the presented tools, we can actually achieve our goals. We can have um, fast and easy integrations due to the reusability and the separation. We could actually cut our um, time effort in half for the integrations, which is really good. Um, we could have really good reusability using the workflows and the um, corresponding components. So we can actually reuse up to two thirds of our functionality. And yeah, in the end, maintainability due to the separation of our, our server and really the minimal custom code, it's really easy to maintain. So if we need to provide some fixes or other updates, we can do that really fast because we don't have to work uh, to wait on the full server release cycle. Yes, and in the end, all of it helps us to achieve our main goal, which is helping our customers to get the most of their loyalty solution. Yeah, thanks for your attention and maybe the time will come to say hello again. <laughs>